because we're all one, everything that we are carrying is going to be part of your state, and all this stuff is coming in it, yeah? and you just it's just hitting you, boom, 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 and then you've got to deal with it. And you thought, oh, wow. to me is some of you need that space to sit and be here and be in the energy because there's some phenomenal things happening in this room phenomenal people have just sat but there's so much going on um, I wonder if we can ask Dagnith here to come and speak what comes from her heart and then after that I suggest people have a bit of a break and then are people happy to come back here afterwards? Of course. Yeah? Okay then. So um, if you talk for what you think and then we'll decide what to do for the battery. Okay, okay, so this is Dagman. And again I met her last day in April. Yes. And um, I've been on her website and just through the written word a phenomenal energy comes through and I've become aware of the fact that she's actually shifted herself to an even different level. Mm -hmm. So, ladies and gentlemen, I think you're done. Mm -hmm. Hello everyone. Um, I'm going to shift the pace a little bit from uh, what we just heard with Jonathan, which was very lovely. Um, I want to bring us a little bit back down into our bodies and, uh, and connect here. Um, what I'm presenting is called the Global Awakening and Humanity's Next Step. Because we're all aware that there's been a global awakening going on for a long time. Many may not know how it all started in a sense. Um, obviously consciousness has always been growing, but something very specific happened. Um, in 1996, where um, I received cosmic consciousness in a full-blown way, which is something that is not the same as the downloads that are currently happening. This is something that only happens to a few persons on the planet at a time. If any of you know of Tara Mata, she was uh, a disciple of Yogananda. She received this as well and has described it in her book a forerunner of the new race so you can check that out and this happened to me because i had a purpose we all have a purpose for being here and for me it was to seed this cosmic consciousness into the collective consciousness of humanity at the time and so a lot of the awakening has been like a pass it on movement where it started with a ripple it started with conscious act and sacrificial acts that I did and that sent this out as a wave and then everyone who has had a resonance with this within their own hearts and remembering has picked up on it and are also sending out their own waves so it's it's just been growing and growing and it's still ongoing but what I'm talking about is the next step because even though we talk about ascension ascension means to ascend higher, 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 which is what we're doing in the sense that we're embodying more and more and more of our self, our spiritual self. But it's not meant to be ascending to the point where we disconnect from Mother Earth, which is what unfortunately happens if we become too focused on the consciousness, too focused on the other realms, the other multi multidimensional aspects of ourself, which are very important, 
but only in the sense of, okay, but how can I use that here? How is that important for me where I am right now? So I like to use the terminology of ascension and descension. It's like we ascend in the sense of expanding our consciousness and then we let that descend into our body so we can really be plugged in and plugged into mother. How many of you happen to see the relatively recent movie Gravity? Some of you see that, yeah, with Sandra Bullock. Excellent. So this is a movie called Gravity, which is actually about anti-gravity, right? Because they're out in space, and what's happened is that they're, they're trying very hard to find their way back to Earth. And I think it's one of those things we kind of take for granted. We're so used to being here, we don't really appreciate what a miracle it is that we are actually part of this Earth and not flying off, you know, without any aim through the cosmos. Um, being part of Mother Earth is what I like to use the terminology of our geo-self, our higher self actually, our geo-self is the whole world. Because we know we're all one with one another, but that's just the human species. And Jonathan was bringing up, you know, cats and dogs and even guinea pigs, and we're one with all of those as well. And we also need to remember, we're also one with the people that we're not liking. We're also one with those who are in the elite, who are the greedy ones, who are corrupting systems. And the only way for us to fight, I have to use this word, uh, what we're seeing happening on earth is to recognize that love is stronger than fear, absolutely, but that is actually a fight going on. It's not all love. If everything was just love, the world would look much differently than it does. And I'm the first to be a very optimistic person and look at the bright side of things, but I also want to be very real. And the way earth is now, in her state, it's quite critical. So the consciousness wave that's been seeded was to wake people up to the fact, hey, we're not victims. We're spiritual beings in human form. We have a lot of power. We have unconditional love. We can be unconditional love in our acts. But then, okay, then what? We need to have a cause. We need to have a purpose. And the purpose is what we're all really here for. And someone was saying, um, our purpose is to be who we are. Yes, that's part of it. But it's not our life purpose. Does anybody have an idea what our really, our true life purpose is collectively now, beyond religion, beyond gender, beyond faith? Is it preparation? The raising of vibration. Yeah. That's part of the cosmic consciousness going on. Yes, everybody's participating by purifying themselves, they help the whole. But what is our purpose for being here on Earth? To wake up. Well, we can wake up on the other planes as well. This is actually in many of the ancient texts, even the Bible. Do you mean just to have the human experiences that help to evolve us? No. When Adam and Eve were created, what was their task? They were to look after the garden. <coughs> we're here to take care of this planet. Doesn't that make sense? We're here to be bio-guardians. We are like the antivirus cells on a body that we are meant to help heal. And instead we have become viruses ourselves. So all the sicknesses that we have are because of what we are doing to our geo-self, what we're doing to Mother Earth. When we take her oil, for instance, we get Alzheimer's. When we pollute her air, we get lung cancer. Can you see that that's the connection? It's very logical when you think about it. And so I like to describe the divine in a certain way. So rather than using the term God, which again, many of us have a different opinion of what that actually means, how about just saying the divine? How could we define what the divine is? Any, any examples? No. That would be an aspect of the divine, but what could we say the divine is? Pure essence of being. Essence of being, right. 
But what is that? The good. Consciousness realization. No, that's not where I'm going, yeah. Our inner light, yeah, part of it. But what, how are we describing the divine? So there was, there was words like creator, for instance. That indicates something male. Creatrix would be the female version. If we go beyond male-female. Just the universal love source. Life. That's it. Life. If you think about it, what better proof do we have of something divine, something higher than life itself? The force that thrusts seeds out of the earth, the force that helps us even, you know, procreate, make new babies, new life. That's divine. That's what we can prove for real. And it has nothing to do with religion. And so when you think about that and you think about, okay, if we're created in the image of our Maker, then our bodies too are sacred temples, right? They host the spirit. But what about the body itself? All of these millions, zillions little cells, right, subatomic particles, all of these, they would look at us as a higher being, as God, right? All of these little cells in our body. So that's the image we can use to look at ourselves compared to Mother Earth. We are her cells. And so in this time now, what's most important is actually that we become as pure as we can. Purification. Purifying our minds, purifying our emotions, purifying our, purifying our bodies. Because since we're all one, everything that we are carrying is going to be part of the whole, part of the biomatrix. And so we're, we're together in it for better or for worse in that sense. So as I was saying, the people we don't like, the people that are... Uh, working in greedy, selfish ways and are corrupting what should be um, a very shared, beautiful experience with shared resources, they are also in our system because we're all part of that. As long as we're all here embodied together, it's, it's the third dimension that we're in. Even though our consciousness may be beyond the third dimension, we can, we can tap into many higher states and still be here, right? But as physical beings, we are part of that matrix. So how do we escape from that? How do we change that? Is there a way out? Will consciousness do it? Raising our consciousness. No. My point is that meditation can help us on an individual level and it can also, when we're in groups, affect larger areas. We know this, the effects of meditation. But if there's war going on and if a child is sitting next to her father and he's being bumped, is she wanting us to sit in meditation? No, she wants us to drag her away from there and be safe, right? So, what I want to get to is we need to remember to be here and be practical. Because a lot of what is in us of our talents and abilities, it's fascinating. And then we might become caught up in continuously looking and looking within without letting that have an effect outside ourselves. And that can become like... Uh, um, stopping the energy. When we're one, we need to share it and give it out. So, what other ways do we know where we can collectively become more pure? Our health, right? So how do we have a good health? Making the right choices. Making the right choices, which are what? Um, maybe deleting things from your life. Things that you put into your body, you have to delete them. That's right. Also, train and learn the body to accept a new thing into it. Because mm -hmm. you may not like the taste of it at first or the smell of it, but you have to understand that it's giving so much 
more. Mm -hmm. So you're thinking on a physical level, deal. yes, like so the food we choose to eat, that's mm -hmm. one level, exactly. Also things like, um, if, if you've got something that's big and it's destroying not just people and their health, but it's destroying, without using the label here, but it's destroying the earth as well. Yes. Yeah. We all know that brown stuff that we put into vehicles that gets us around. Yes. That, that to me, that's a big, big killer. It's yes. a big red flag for me. Mm. And if we were to, if not just one person or one group, everybody was to boycott and say, okay, it will take me an extra hour to get to work mm -hmm. if I do it in the environmental way mm -hmm. instead of putting that thing into my car and the whole cycle of it. Yeah? Mm -hmm. if, we, if some of us did it, then sometimes others will be shocked. Sometimes you have to shock people to make them mm -hmm. actually wake up, to make yes. them aware. And those yes. things, that guy is a CEO. You know, <laughs> how is he? he, he, he He's too important to walk along the street. What if he gets robbed? Mm -hmm. But if this guy can do it, then other people that are in yeah. his circle, in his kind of circles, on his kind of levels, they, I believe they'll start to do it as yes. well. That's very good. So that's our example. Right? Yeah. So our choices affect what other people do as well. You want to say something? Yeah, I've just recently connected to um, I can't explain, you know, I'm aware of my vessels, I can set any boards, I can have that, you know, that awareness as well. So I'm just reasonably connected to having, uh, well, I've got two really close friends that have just been diagnosed with cancer, so, and then recently I've just had this, uh, actually, it was only since I said about how can I, having your bodies, how can I, right. how if your bodies, your vessels are more acidic, Yes. that's when you can attract certain health conditions. Right. Yeah. So this yeah, is the physical the level, level. Yeah, right? Level. Of what we eat, what we choose to put in our bodies, which should probably be organic, preferably mm -hmm. vegetarian, vegan, yeah. because also when we're eating animals, which are you know our cohabitants, and I really don't mean to offend anyone if you like your chicken. But um, there's no longer really healthy meat anyway. It's not been living wild. It's it's creating a bad karma for all of us, which keeps us in the lower vibrations. It actually helps to keep us in the third dimension, which is where the animal realm is more uh, belonging. Whereas we being spiritual beings in physical form, we are here to just... Um, be part of the earth but have our consciousness from a higher state and the meat eating will keep that uh, impure in a sense. So that's the physical level of our physical food. Now how can we purify the emotions? What about all the guilt, the fear, the shame, insecurities, all of that that we're carrying? Is there a way to be rid of that? Self-enlightenment? Um. Well, yeah, this is the thing, you see, everything is connected together, so what is on the physical plane will affect the emotional plane, that also carrying will affect the way we think about ourselves, so the mental realm, all the self-doubts come in, and then it hinders our purest access to spirit. To, and when I do it like this, I'm saying like opening up, but actually I'm talking about spirit within, because it's here, not out there. Um, so all of these levels need to be in balance with one another. And the indigenous people, they show this with the medicine wheel that they've got, you know, a circle and they've got it into four squares. So it's the mental realm, the emotional realm, the physical realm, and the spiritual realm, all four. And these realms are, like I said, connected. So any imbalance on one will affect the others. And there's a lot of healing going on now, which is energetic healing. And the way healing works is through the physical realm of electromagnetics. So energetic healing will be part of the physical realm of electromagnetics unless it's from a higher source. Now even the astral and causal and mental planes belong to the physical realm in that sense of electromagnetics. It's only when we go to the pure realms of spirit that we bypass that. That's where we can get out of um, 
the cause and effect and go to pure, pure spirit realms, the divine realms. And in order to access that um, as purely as possible, the difference would be versus the connection many people have now is like you're wandering in the woods and you've got uh, dark foliage trees all around you and there's a narrow path <coughs> that you're walking along and you can see the light in the distance but it's quite dim. This is the way most people today are connected with their inner spirit and it can be broadened up a bit during meditation but during the day it's quite dimly lit and very narrow. After one has been through a proper reset where the collective fear and guilt and shame is removed, that narrow path becomes like a broad highway where the connection to spirit is broad, broadly lit and it's in a much more continuous state. So this makes sense. The purer we are, the easier we access spirit within ourselves. So then the question is, how do we do that? How do we get a reset? And there is only one way because, as I said, everybody here is carrying everybody else. Everybody here is carrying our own individual um, traumas, uh, abuse, whatever emotional or mental scars we might have from this incarnation and from all our previous incarnations and from our ancestors and their incarnations and one another because we're one. Not a single person in this room can be um, is completely healed because we are all one and the earth is definitely not healed yet, not whole. So we're one in spirit, we're one in understanding our oneness, but we're not one in the sense of being whole. And another word for oneness, which explains this too, is justice. Justice, the etym etymology of just comes from words like yuga, yoga, meaning union, right? So justice itself means oneness. And yet we see there's injustice in the world. Like I was saying, there are the negative forces and there are those who have awakened who want to counter that. So regardless of how optimistic we are, regardless of you know, wanting to just dismiss fear and say it's all about love, these are the facts. There are negative forces around us and that's just the way it is. And trying to um, escape from that or not admit that is what I would call ostrich mentality. It's putting your hand, head in the sand and saying, well, I'm just going to be about love and peace and happiness and ignore that. And meanwhile, there are others who are suffering. So just consider this another wake-up call in addition to the one you already have because there are many levels of awakening. It's time for us to really get real now. Jupiter, which uh, Ghana was talking about earlier, is a very benevolent planet and it expands everything and we've been seeing a lot of Jupiter's influence now. It, it's helping to bring about that love consciousness, that oneness, because Jupiter is actually the eso esoteric planet ruler for the age of Aquarius. But like I said, with the ascension, you can only go so far. And then what happens after Jupiter? Do you know what planet comes after Jupiter in, in the planetary order? Saturn, thank you. So in cosmic planetary order, if we think of the sun as our inner self, right? And we embody all of these planets, obviously, because we're part of everything. But on our journey to expand ourselves, after we've integrated Jupiter's influence of love, light, peace, goodwill, we move on. We move on to embody Saturn. And that might not be as popular because Saturn is about limits and restricting. But it's also the planet that refines. So to be diamonds, to be purified like we're talking about, we need Saturn to help us be rid of, like you were saying, all of the distractions, things that take our attention away from what's actually happening here in our world, looking more, not just on our own development, but looking at, okay, where is the world at? If we want to be helping the world, we need to look at the world and not just our own little pond. 
So Jupiter helps us to take responsibility. Jupiter helps to bring us back on duty and remind us, hang on, I'm here for a purpose, which is to be a bio-guardian. I'm here to help rid this earth of the forces that are stealing mother's resources. Even all of us, we don't think about it, but there are many ways we can make small differences that will make a big, big change. Because all of us have been taking from mother and not really thinking about it. For instance, if we look at money, where does money come from? Paper bills. From trees. Has she given us permission to chop down her trees? No. And metal coins, metal, from her ores, right? So everything that we have, all of it has come from mother, and we've taken it, and we've taken it for granted. So the way we can reverse all of the entropy, all of the destruction that's going on now in the world, there is a way, and that's to start giving back. Okay. The law of reciprocity is, the more you give, the more you receive. Now, I don't mean giving away freely without being conscious of how one is giving away. And I'm going to explain this because it's very important. Because a lot of healing being done now is actually also being done for free. And although we think that's the right way to do it, because it's just giving without expecting anything in return, Actually, we're breaking the law of re reciprocity. It creates an imbalance. Just think about the word balance. Balance like a scale, right? It's even on both sides. So if we just keep giving, 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 it's going to be an imbalance. The same applies, obviously, the opposite way around as well. If we just receive, 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 that's equally wrong. So the only way it's balanced is we give and receive. Give and receive, always. So when you're doing healings, if you don't have some form of compensation in return, and you do this over a long, long period of time, you might find that you're going to be ending up drained. Your energy will be drained more and more because you're giving without receiving in return. And if it's not your physical health, then your money, your, your monetary resources will be drained because again, you just keep giving without receiving. And again, the opposite applies if you just want to go and receive all the time and receive and receive without giving back. It's going to um, bottle you up so you're going to be more and more confined. People often become confined in their own homes and not able to move out because they've been abusing this law of giving and receiving, whether it's this way or that way, too much giving or too much receiving. It creates an imbalance and then the house becomes a symbol of their own body. It's not imbalanced, it's not flowing, it's stuck somehow. So I'm going to use water as an example to explain life force, energy, right? If we pour water down into a sink, then the water will flow through the drains and it will go off somewhere, we don't know where, sewers and then maybe a into the ocean, never to return, right? So this is the way we give healing without anything return. It goes and it's gone. If we give with a mutual uh, reciprocity, we can use the image of a fountain, right? A fountain can have a motor which enables the water to go in a continuous flow, right? It's not going anywhere, it's continuous, continuously flowing in the fountain. This is what we can see as the divine. When we give to the divine, as in Mother Earth, as in anything that is a cause helping orphan, ch orphan children or endangered species or pure water and air projects, anything that's helping for the bigger whole, Yes, important life and earth saving projects, that's part of the divine. Then the divine will give back in the form of healing, in the form of you being purified and in balance more and more. You are enhanced more and more. Does this make sense? Do you see where I'm going? Good. So we can look at it also the way two children, for instance, playing with a ball. It can be in a healing session, right? 
one child holding the ball, and then on the physical realm, um, the realm of electromagnetics, then the ball will be passed from this person to the other, right? That's the energy. Okay, now I have it. I give you healing. Now you have it. You give it back to me. It's limited because the realm of electromagnetics is a manifested limited world. Now, the divine, on the other hand, is, as I said, from the realm beyond that, beyond electromagnetics, the purer realms. When we give to Mother Earth, which is divine, part of life, as, as created here, that enables our healing again, our ability to self-heal, because all of us are actually healers. It's just that we can't properly heal until we have been rid of the collective fear and guilt and shame that we're still all carrying for everything that we have done to this earth over the millennia. Not one of us is innocent in that sense. Children are innocent coming now, absolutely, and we need them to know about this so that they learn to take care of the earth or there won't be one in the future. If everybody's going to be ticking away on their computers and nobody's going to be planting seeds, it's just logical. This is a bioorganism, and we are bioorganisms as long as we are in physical form. So this is very important to remember. And in the giving back to Mother Earth, that's where the miracle happens. That's where we get the healing again. We know that although we're spiritual beings in human form, we're still not our full potential. Far from it. We're only using between 7 and 10% of our brain capacity. Again, Ghana was talking about scientists calling it junk DNA, far from it. These are abilities we have, but they've been blocked millions of years ago because, we don't need to get into cosmic history, but our role as bioguardians was our original purpose, and at some point we strayed from that. That's what's known as divine natural law and order. When we're working with the divine and in alignment, we have the ability to self-heal. We could use 100% of our brain capacity. We would have natural clairvoyance, clairsentience, clairaudience, all of these higher powers, which we call supernatural. They're not, they're natural. It's just that we have actually not evolved, we have devolved. cro magnon had a brain of 2.2 liters, now we're down to 1.6 or something. So it means even though the consciousness is expanding, it's because of what's been seeded now, what's needed for this age. But at the same time, we're becoming very much dumbed down by what is fed to us through the media and by all of the restrictions that are given to us by our chosen leaders. Um, so again, it's about being limitless in a world that's limited and knowing that there is a way out the way out is to give back to Mother Earth, to stop that cycle of destruction. That's the path we're actually on now. And to flip it around and in the giving that re reactivates these powers that we have. It's in that giving that we are, in a sense, not taken out of the third dimension, the third dimensional matrix, but we're, we're freed from carrying the negative part of it. It's like if we use the analogy of a computer. So you've had a computer for a number of years and it's working fine, but then all of a sudden it starts to be a bit slower, it's not performing optimally, and there might be some viruses in the computer as well that you weren't aware of because you're just not seeing them. So the function of the computer is not its best. And then you take it to a computer store or a repairman and he will do a complete reset. So meaning he will be rid of all of these viruses and do a reboost so that all of a sudden the computer is functioning as new again. This is what all of us can actually receive now. We can receive a reboot, a reset, where the guilt, fear, shame, everything we're carrying that I've explained now is removed. And in exchange, we give a substantial contribution to the earth for that. It's like, some people will then ask, but why, you know, uh, I'm fine, my health is fine. 
the point is humanity is actually not fine because our self-healing capacities are blocked, as I said. This is something that we should have naturally and don't anymore. So for the world to become whole, we all need to do this process. This is the next step for humanity. We all need to be able to reboost, reboot ourselves in a sense, purify ourselves so that we become antivirus cells in the body of Mother Earth. Right now we are biocriminals, we are takers, we are um, polluting and using up the resources rather than <coughs> contributing. And obviously this is said, you know, without any kind of judgment, this is what we're all doing because we haven't known any better, we haven't known that there's a way out, and now we do. So the realm of miracles happens when we become purified again and able to access that divine within without there being blockages the way there are now. This is the only way to truly heal. It's the key to self-healing is through giving. Giving creates a loop where we receive more and more again from the divine and we are able to self-heal, able to help others and we can create a global wave of healing. So just to wrap it up now, the way the cosmic consciousness was seeded, it was as an inner wave where it reaches people heart to heart through resonance. This next step is actually taking on again our duty as bio-guardians and becoming the new race that we were meant to be with our full potential. So 100% of our brain, all our abilities intact, able to make a big difference here on Earth in a very quick and efficient way, in a way that I don't know any other method that is as fast and as genuine as this, because the root cause is not addressed. The root cause being we are all carrying this, and no healing can be fully permanent and for all unless we address the root cause. So, I hope you understand what I mean by that. Thank you very much.